This is a nice Lego town. At the center of it all is a four-story Lego bank, okay? Just, just asking uh, to be robbed from uh, my Lego self. And I'm sure people are like, oh my God, that's horrible. He's promoting, I don't give a shit anymore. I really don't. It looks like the bricks armored car was probably making a delivery here to Lego City Bank. These guys somehow were brought to the scene. Somehow, I don't really know, but they appear to be happy and I would guess innocent of whatever they're being chased for. We got a cop ready to cuff this dude. FBI agent, um, yeah, Lego doesn't endorse FBI agent guys, or what is that, an M16? You gotta find that in China, definitely. But the point is, everything is out here. Look at us, look at me. Meanwhile, a guy in similar clothes, ironically, is in a raft floating away with some cash. You gonna zoom in on it? I don't know how close you can get. If it was me, right there, he's realizing that even though he's on top of the world, or in this case, the top of this fire station, he's got money and he's miserable as shit. And it's time for him to go to the can, which I need to build a prison. Oh, I couldn't imagine having one of these things back in the day. You could put boop, 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 and just sit somewhere, and you have like no worries. I didn't just one day wake up and decide to rob an armored truck. There were smaller things that had happened, and then a little bit bigger things, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. That's actually a good view, dude. Look at that. I'm gonna come at it from a different angle. I'm not famous, that's for sure. Infamous because of the armored car robbery in 2008. Bank of America, here we are. The reason it got media attention was because of, well, number one, I escaped on an inner tube. And number two, I hired decoys, I guess you'd say, um, to help me pull off the robbery. Part of the uh, setup for the crime was these Craigslist ad that had Peter Will dress up like Landscapers. I don't know, maybe 16 guys and girls that showed up in a blue shirt, blue hat, safety vest, and they were dressed identically to the person who robbed the armored truck, which, as you know, it's me. 15 to 20 labor workers needed for various tasks and general cleanup must be in excellent physical condition, able to work 8 to 10 hours a day, must provide valid driver's license, and have bad vision, that's what I should have added. Have bad vision, then he wouldn't be able to see me. 911, what is your emergency? Armed robbery. Okay, what address? Uh, the Bank of America. Looking out the window, talking with a client, nothing really seemed out of the ordinary. I was very emotional. I did a lot of praying because I needed the help. Oh, you know, I said, please do what's best for my family. Like, even me, I wouldn't ask to have help for robbing it. Yeah, Dear yeah. God. Please help me rob this armored truck. <laughs> it's what's best. <laughs> Looking at a guy walking around in shorts, spraying chemicals. Adrenaline is like full guns right now. Grabs a can out of his pocket as he's charging. Give him, you know, a dose of the, the, the pepper spray. There's a bank robbery, gotta go. White male, brown hair. Okay. I'm pursuing as long as the phone will work. I take the money. I ran out the back door and he was pretty fast. I was so scared it would have been hard to catch me. As he was running, he's pulling off his hat. Turns out all this is a disguise. Pulling off the wig, the mask. I was so just gasping, I just needed to get rid of it. And he's got a bag full of money. I think it was like 80 pounds, which is a lot of money. We're just missing him, unfortunately. The witness on the, on the cell phone gets up, he sees him getting into the personal phone device, 
and going down the river. The only reason I would be stupid enough to use an inner tube as a getaway vehicle or whatever was because it's so stupid that like no one would think it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because it's weird. You know, it's weird. So I'm got the money inside of the inner tube and I'm on my back and I'm just, you know, pulling as fast as I can. I had to put a, a cable to help guide himself down the river so he can get underneath the highway. Oh geez, this was the most exhausting walk ever. I was so, I was just done. Like adrenaline and like fear was kind of starting to wear off here. Yeah. It was like, oh my God. Got the dog out there, um, dead end with the dog, but he did get away. The biggest thing was the eyewitness to saw him take off the mask and wig and sunglasses and throw him to the ground. He, he just left his DNA. So if we can figure out who he is, we've got him. One of our city workers came and talked to us about a homeless guy who found a, a, a robbery kit near Bank of America. So that sparked it. I wanted to do a check with the inner tube involved and I didn't want to run with the wig and all that stuff on. After doing the time run, I walked back to pick up my stuff. And after I pick it up, I hear, hey, I know what that stuff is. And there's something just totally just outrageous. And Alan Dean goes, hey, I know what that's for, and confronts him. I think he kept saying those are robbery tools or something. And it was just like, I had never heard it, was, never heard it called that. Uh, but sure enough, the guy was, you know, right on. He's not your typical homeless. Uh, most were homeless. They wouldn't care. Here I just jeopardized all of it with something so stupid. And I started looking at like the, the probability of everything, the odds, and what are the chances that he wasn't wasted drunk? You know, what are the chances that he had a pen? Alan Dean um, always does crosswords. Uh, puzzles and always has a pencil and is crossword with him. The chances of all these things happening were just slim. And I was like, you know what? I'm committed, I'm moving forward. He was clear mind and he got out his pencil and looked at the license plate and wrote down the license plate number. You know, obviously I underestimated the homeless man. That vehicle came back to Emily Kershaw's family. It's probably Anthony, or he definitely was ma a major part of it, right? So we knew he's probably involved. We need to put surveillance on him. What is he gonna do now? Got his DNA, um, we gotta keep an eye on these guys. And the next day, Kershaw dis disappears. Yeah, he told his wife he went to a funeral in Eastern Washington. And he was in Vegas. And he was in Vegas. So me going to Vegas after the crime happened wasn't out of the ordinary. What was out of the ordinary is that I uh, paid for quite a few other people to, to go as well. I brought a decent chunk of change there. I wanted to clean up some of it. Oh no, there goes some money. Um, yeah, I could see it. Big party, gambling, how much money is gonna be left? <laughs> it became just a trip from hell. There was this night when I was at the Palms Casino. I remember it was just all glass, ceiling to uh, floor. I got super depressed. I looked out like over the city. I was like, you know, out of all these people that, you know, you see, it seems like millions of people, just all little small, you know. And I was like, you know, I took a risk that, you know, none of them would have taken. And I did it, you know, for my family. But. Here I was in, in, in Vegas, and I couldn't really lie to myself. I knew deep down that I wasn't, uh, I wasn't a good father. My kids didn't deserve that shit. My wife didn't deserve it. I'm just like, fuck. So, it was just a matter of time. A matter of time before they got me. I flew back, and, um, Alan Dean, the bum, saved my life. I mean, because really, I would have just kept going. I can't control myself. We got the DNA back in three weeks. Lab calls me, hey, it's a match. Anthony Curcio's DNA is on 
the items. I come in and let people know, hey, we got him. We got him. We got, him. We got to hook him up. We had uh, FBI watching him now. He's back in town. So FBI is watching him. They're wa they follow them out to Outlet Mall area. They're out there spending money. They had been tailing me. And what's crazy is they must have done a good job. And I hate to say that, but they must have done a good job with their tail because I didn't know. He didn't see this coming. Yeah, they totally ambushed me at Target. Right away, though, it's, you know, what are you talking about? You don't, you know, I don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean? What robbery? Um, do you know who my dad is? Do you know who my parents are or something just absolutely embarrassing? <laughs> he said that. It's just like, you know what I want to say? You fucking stupid idiot. Please, you're embarrassing Wait. yourself later. Look at how fucked up I look right there. Right there is a person who couldn't do it, who could not stay clean. Yeah, and just the cockroaches, holy fucking hell. Lights would go down at, you know, 11 o'clock, and it was like you had to cover up immediately, really. You'd wake up every morning, and I learned to sleep completely still because you only get one sheet, right? And you'd wrap this sheet around you, and before you go to bed, you know, make sure there's no cracks, no way that these fucking things can get in. And, and they just fucking sit on the other side. And as you wake up every morning, it's just like this little panic for like 10, 15 seconds. Like, is there a spot? Is there a spot open? Oh, okay, there's not. And then it's, you know, slowly working our way down, getting these fucking things off. And you just see little shadows and it's so fucking sick. A beautiful thing happened in there, and it was like I, I took responsibility for fucking like everything. I realized how passionate about drawing I had become, and really what started as like me just doing little tiny illustrations and Elmo and you know whatever uh, have turned into these elaborate books. Since I was so far away, and I only got you know my phone calls were limited. Uh, you know, trying to have a conversation with a, you know, a two-year-old and then like a two-month-old and keep that conversation. I mean, I remember there was inmates staring at me in the phone and stuff because I'd be like talking like Elmo and, you know, Cookie Monster. Like, hello girls, it's Cookie Monster, we love you! No, 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 you know, I mean, I really like just anything I could do to keep their attention. So that's where the drawings came in. So I get out and, you know, I have this dream. I really, really wanted to be a children's book author. I had already, before I gotten out, tried to get published, I think like a hundred and something times with My Daddy's in Jail. It was a book I wrote about prison. The reason I wrote this is because this shit's for real. Like, my kids, you know, went through all of this. Okay, so basically this book is narrated by a cockroach, that guy right there. And this shows a bunch, this whole scene right here, which is very, very intense. I think that took me like two months to do. I love to draw, but it was also like this pain, the, fueled by, you know, pain from knowing how bad I hurt innocent people, you know, my two daughters. So these are my daughters, these guys right here, Bella and Lila Bear. And here's my bear right here, me. I'm thinking about, I'm dreaming about holding my daughter and flying her like an airplane and picking up the other one. But as you can see, the resemblance between the two right there. Yeah, so these are just examples of some of my books. Uh, most are sports themes and are sports themed, and that's uh, mainly because of the popularity of this. Uh, this became a bestseller as a paperback. That really was what instantly changed like everything for for my family. May as well have my own product up on the wall. My transformation, I guess, as a person, it came at the worst time of my life. I hope I'm not known for this crime forever and I'm trying to like reinvent myself whether or not that will happen I don't know <laughs>